this is Laura from Watch Laura Sew and today we are going to be doing part two of the shells and today we are co covering scallops, we're covering sand dollars and we are covering cowrie shells which are just kind of just plain fun but they are nice to use in a small area and I guess you could use it in a big area if you wanted to do a lot of them but you, you know it's something that you can use in a small area. So we're going to get started right now at the sewing machine. I'll see you there. I'm working on the Juki today, the Juki TL18. I have my feed dogs down now. <laughs> my stitch length to zero. I'm using glide thread and I'm using an open toe foot. So today we're going to start with a scallop. And I like the scallop as one of the shells that I do. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to come up and I know my pointer doesn't have a point. We're going to come up and around and then we're going to go over and go up for the inside of the scallop. Go up straight and then we're going to come down and do our little fan and end right here and go out. So let's go ahead and try doing that. Scallops are a lot of fun. And the thing about scallops, sometimes they, for instance, on this fabric, you can see some nice scallops here. They have nice little ridges. If you wanted to do that, you certainly could. And I will do one with that, but I'm also gonna do one that's just plain straight. So let's go ahead, let's do a plain scallop with no ridges, and then we'll come back and we'll do a scallop with ridges because first I just want to get the basic design down. So what we're going to do, I've got some navy blue thread here so hopefully you'll be able to see everything. I'm going to go up and around. It's like a big balloon kind of shape but you're not completing the balloon now i'm going to go across one stitch and i'm going to go straight up and then back and when i go back i don't always go straight exactly on the line uh, only because i like to add interest and i think it adds a little interest I'm going to go ahead and cut the threads off just so we can see where we're going. And now we're going to go up again and back down. And then over two stitches or one, depending on how large your stitches are, and go up again. And you can add a little bit of a curve to it. Makes it look kind of nice. And one more time. And if you can fit more in and you want more, it's up to you. Your scallops are yours. We're gonna complete the going across here. And then we're gonna come da down to do our fan. So we're going to come down here and across and back down. So we're going to come down about three stitches and then over straight and that does not need to be super straight you can have a little curve in it because uh, shells have curves and so then we're going to go back up and we're back to our the beginning of our shell now that's a basic one and I'm gonna come out here and just start another one. That's This is just a basic shell and you could do an entire quilt like that. Sometimes I add a loop onto it to get from one shell to another. And you can use all different shells combined on the same quilt. It would make a really fun design. So now we're going to do it a little bit differently. 
It's kind of like once you get that under your belt, then you can do things a little bit differently. You can add in all kinds of complication and design that you want to add to your own designs. So for instance, this time we're going to do, we're gonna fan it out a little bit more and we're gonna add some ridges. So I'll show you what I mean. And it actually makes it a little more realistic as to a normal scallop. All right, so we're gonna go out here and we're gonna fan this out. So we're going to go at an angle and we're gonna make some hills and then we're gonna come back and then we're gonna make our lines up to our hills and then we'll make our little bottom fan too. All right, so let's go ahead. All right, now I'm going to make about, well, you can make as many as you want because some of the scallops are very small hills and some are large. So I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to come back down. One of the things I'm going to say is that we're going to be coming into the same point as we go out and come back, out and come back. So it's going to have a lot of stitching in this area. That's simply the nature of the design. It's uh, something that just to be aware of is going to compact that area quite a bit but it, it makes for a very pretty design. So let's go ahead, we're gonna go up. And I don't worry if my line is perfectly straight, nor do I worry if I come back exactly correct on top of the line, because I think that it adds a little interest. Just like that. Now, if you're having trouble seeing behind your foot, you can, if you have a quilt that you can move around, or if it's like a table runner, uh, you could uh, twirl it around so that you can see where you're going. And you can bring it towards you and then twirl it back. Uh, it's kind of really up to you. So if you like going right back on the same line, you can do that. And you can make it a little curved, a little bit curved if you want. I think that adds a little bit and makes it more kind of natural looking. For me, and especially if you're doing a lot of these on a quilt and we'll bring this back. And now we're gonna go up, we're gonna go up our outside line right here. We're gonna go up about one fifth of the way uh, because everybody's shells can be different sizes rather than say, you know, three or four stitches. It can be about one fifth of the way and then we're going to make our fan on the bottom. So let's go ahead, we're going to go out here, up one fifth of the way. Now, shells can have a, a few different things. You can have on these shells, it can fan out a little bit, or it can come down straight, or um, however you want. So for me, I'm gonna fan it just a little bit but you can do it any way you want. I'm gonna just fan it out because I like the look. And then I'm going to, I fanned it just slightly. Whoops, don't wanna do that so you can't see. Now I'm gonna come down. 
and make it about the same size. And now I'm going to try and fan it back with a little bit of a curve. And then from here, if you are doing shells one after another on, uh, for instance, on just a line, so you could do something like come off of here and do a loop. And then you know be able to go to the next shell too. So let's do this again because you can do something else. We're going to do another one. So we're going to travel up here. All right. So one other thing that you can do is you could add on to here, and I did not show that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and show that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a shorter one here and then another shorter one. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more depth. And so the first one is going to go up about halfway. But here's what we're going to do so that we make sure that we do it even all the way across. We are actually going to go ahead and do this basic start right here and then we're going to come back and add our sides. I find for me, this helps me make a better scallop. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go straight up, just like I did before. And I'm going to go across. Now, I am actually, I'm at this point. I know that I'm going to come down. I'm going to come down. I have this side right here as a guide. So I want to come down about a, a fifth of the way. And I'm going to come down a little bit. And then I'm going to go and make a, another hill. And I'm going to come down to about the halfway point. And I'm going to do another one. And now I'm going to angle back to here. So it's going to angle back. All right. And now I haven't forgotten about the other side yet, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my lines in here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come back. So I got to go ahead and put the lines in like I did before. I'll speed it up for this part of it. <laughs> now I'm going to go back up and I haven't finished yet because I haven't made these two uh, kind of uh, ridges. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to I'm going to go over this line right here and I'm going to go up to the one fifth down one about one fifth of the way down point and make a, a rid uh, make a hill and then I will make another hill that's halfway down so let's go ahead and do that so we're right here we're going to go ahead and make a little hill. And now I'm going to go down a halfway point. I can see it right here. So it's not quite halfway, but this is about where it'd look good. And I'll make another one. And then I'll come back in. And now I can go out to this line. and come back in. So there's my fan and it's a lot more fanned out. Now on this here, I could, I should have brought this a little bit up here a little bit more so it'd look a little smoother, but I did not. 
All right, so now we're gonna go back up here and we're going to do our bottom fan. Now, if you notice, I have a line right here and I'm just going to let it incorporate into the design as a line that's right there and I'm not gonna worry about it. Ideally, I should have brought it in a little bit higher, but I didn't know where this point was gonna be. So, you know, it's just gonna be part of the design. So let's go ahead and make a fan out here. We're gonna come across and I want to make sure that it looks pretty even. And then we're going to come up like this. And then if we wanted to go ahead and go out from here, we certainly can. That is a scallop. And I think that it's the easiest way of handling, making sure that these look okay with these. And your scallops are not always going to be even or perfect. And scallops in nature are not either. So we go from a very, a very simple scallop, scallop shape to a more complicated scallop shape adding the hills in here and then we finally fan it out and add more hills in a different way so this is a more complete scallop and that's what i would typically put on a quilt or a table runner the next one that i wanted to show is a cowrie shell and they're fairly fun they look very similar to the clams that i showed before so I'm not going to, we'll, we'll kind of move this down. But they're, they're shaped just slightly different. One, they're small, and but they are kind of, uh, the first thing I do is I actually do the leaf shape, the leaf shape of the calorie shell because it's actually very skinny and very small. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go out here and come back. And then the calorie shells are kind of wide and um, round. <laughs> so we're gonna go out here. And we're gonna cut off our strings. And we'll come back. Now that's a pretty wide one. But they're fun. So we're going to go ahead and do another one. This one we're going to make a little skinnier. Leaf shape coming up and going back. This time we're going to come out. And we will go back. So a lot of times I don't make it touch. So you can see I made the inner leaf, the inner uh, kind of leaf shape, came back around, but when I came up here, I did not actually touch the inner leaf at all, and I left a space between it. I actually like that look a lot better when I do that. And so this is what it can look like when it's touching, and certainly you could make that a little skinnier right there, but I actually like this look a lot more, but I wanted to show you both looks. And, you know, you certainly can make your choice as to how you want yours to look. But this is the, these, this is a calorie shell and they are just a lot of fun. You can put this in a small space and you can put them right next to each other. And it looks really, really neat. So that's the calorie shell. The next one that we're going to do, and the last one that we're doing, is a sand dollar. 
So sand dollars are also fun. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to just make one big circle. And don't worry if your circle is not perfect because mine aren't perfect either, but you try to make it as circle shape as possible. So just make, kind of go out here like you're making one big circle. And mine wasn't perfect. See, it's kind of weird shape. All right, but that's, we're going to keep going on because I think it's close enough. So I'm actually going to come down here and I'm going to come out here and I'm actually going to do a very small half of a leaf, just like that. The next one I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my imaginary center. So here's my imaginary center. Right, right there. I'm gonna go down there to the center, kind of a half leaf again. Now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do a leaf shape up here, come back, come back down. And these can either be, I like them a little bit on, you know, kind of this, amount of shape. Some people might like them a little skinnier for a sand dollar. Now we're going to go out because the sand dollar has five of these, but the it, the top one is here and the, the arms per se of this star are going, going to be on the sides, almost perpendicular to this one. So let's go out here. Not quite, but almost. And we're going to go and make one there. I'm going to come down and do this, that one. And then I'm going to do one over here. Now I'm going to actually come back. I'm going to come back on here and notice what I did. I had I'm going to come back and complete this fifth one. And then I'm going to come back to the, the outer line. And I'm going to do that by completing this little hole here. Because uh, on a sand dollar, they actually have additional holes to them. So let's go ahead, or at least what you see on the beach. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to come back. And I'm, oh, I didn't mean for it. I did not want that to be a wide circle. I want it to be a thin one. So I made a mistake right there. I really wanted that a whole lot thinner. <laughs> okay, so on the Juki TL18, if you hit the back of the the foot, even when you have that guard there, you can cut the threads. And that's what just happened. So let me get it going again. Has anybody else had that happen on your Juki TL18? I have. Obviously, I just demonstrated. It can happen and you just kind of start over and continue. <laughs> it doesn't happen to me often. Uh, it does happen though. And I do have that guard and it's installed correctly. But... All right, we're going to go down. And what we want to do is we want to come down to uh, this one right here. We're going to do one right here. We're going to do a little skinny one. And then right down here, we're actually going to have a long one coming and a long leaf come up and then a small one here and a small one here. There is no leaf shape up on the top. So let's go ahead. We're going to come down the circle. And we're going to do our little and then you come across along your circle until you get in front of that that bottom one 
and you make your little hole and then we bring it up here to our last little arm of this uh, star or flower whatever you want to call it I went a little too far let me back up and come right in there so what you want to do is just a little hole kind of it's like a little hole and it's a it's a leaf shape so going back to our leaf shape and if you uh, missed the video on how we make leaf shapes uh, there I will link it above and you can go out there and look at that video and then we're going to come out here and do our last one this is really a complete shell at this point I, I'm not going to add anything more to it I am actually just going to go out here and a lot of times if I'm you know I might do a loop or I might go into another shell. For instance, I might do something like a cowrie shell here, maybe. All right, and then I might go out here and I mix them up. And I make them go upside down and all kinds of things. Like I might do something like a clam shape. And I might come in here. I forgot to mention this on the clam one. Sometimes what I do is I actually, oh, well, let me show you on the other. Let me come in here. I'm going to go back up for the other side of the clam. And if I wanted to make this into an oyster, I might have the pearl right here. So I might stop halfway up the second side and make my little pearl and then come up here and make my little end of the shell. Okay, so when you combine a lot of different shells shapes together, you can get a really nice design on a quilt or a table runner and it and even a bag. It can be a lot of fun to add the, all the different shell shapes in. So I hope this was very helpful to you and I will see you next time at the sewing machine. Bye bye.